All right, so today I figured I'd give you guys a little shop tour of uh, what I do for a living. Um, also, we're just about at 600 subscribers, so uh, yeah, man, awesome. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. So anyway, um, this is the shop where basically uh, my job is to, well, I'm the um, chief lead mechanic here in the body shop of Coca-Cola, so that basically means I am in charge of this shop and all the trucks in it and how they come in and the way they leave. I, it just means I'm the foreman, pretty much. Um, we're all union, so it's kind of, you know, it's not like I could tell anybody what to do, but I am in charge of... Um, I got a little bit more responsibilities as far as paperwork goes and the way the trucks get done, who does them, and I just organize everything. Uh, I'm not the senior guy. Joe is the senior man. He's at break. Uh, he's been here 30 years, um, but he didn't want the responsibilities. He's on his way out, so uh, I took the chief responsibilities. So just give you a little shop tour. That's basically my job title. Uh, over here we have music very important um, also my job is to make sure the shop stays nice and safe and everything is where it's supposed to be so in here we have the flammable cabinets spray paint all that good stuff has to be in there anything that's combustible flammable has to stay in here this is uh coca-cola red I can't show you the mixture because it's uh it's actually a top secret color code mix for the registered coca-cola color and only me and a few other people in the world know what that color is so um, we are actually the only body shop that coca-cola currently has on the uh, eastern sea border so it's a kind of a new thing they used to send the trucks out but we have a pretty big fleet here where I'm at, so uh, yeah. So basically, what we do is um, re refurbish the trucks. So they come in looking pretty much like this. This one's banged up pretty bad, actually. They're not always like this. This one got in an accident. So uh, what we're gonna do is replace the hood with that one up there. And um, so basically, we'll strip the whole truck down and it'll end up looking like that. And then we'll scuff it down and uh, paint it. And then what we'll do is we'll scrape the frames real good and put a rust protectant on any stuff like that. Grind this heavy stuff off with a grinder and uh, do all that. now. This stuff can't be on there. All that stuff's supposed to be up top. But uh, we'll get to that. We don't like having stuff around the, on the floor. So most of the parts, this one's not done getting disassembled yet. So, but you know, some of the parts will go in there and then we'll put them up top there and label the truck number. So basically we'll strip the stickers and make them look pretty again. So, and then over here we just have some random shelving for parts or whatever this is uh aj's box he's a night he's at nighttime second shift um he's a good guy works hard and then uh we're all, all good guys here all good really good friends so it's pretty pretty cool we're a pretty tight new group that's a tape machine and this thing is the wheel So basically instead of taping up the tire, we'll just put this thing and then spray paint around it. Um, Got to tape off the hubometer so you can see. Can't paint that, but you'll see on the other one. But back here we do all the body filler, stuff like that. Fiberglass work over here, some nuts and bolts. Uh, extra metal, steel for welding, grinder. There's our vise, big old sledgehammer. This is my favorite hammer. A um, couple of decorations. 
Um, Coca-Cola owns both of these, in case you didn't know. So that's why we're allowed to have that. Uh, anything non-Coke product can't be in here. Um, can't even walk in here with a Red Bull. Now, like if you come in here with like a Wawa container or something like that, that's different because Wawa actually buys from Coke and they, their stores, that's different. So, but if it's like Pepsi or Mountain Dew or uh, anything like that, can't have it in here, can't bring it in the building. Um, I've seen them walk people out for it, so. Uh, ladders, there's extra hoods up there. That's Joe's box. That fan we use in the summertime or just when it gets really dusty in here. Uh, there's our heater and then there's a fan that'll go out to the ceiling, which is off right now because it's too cold. And then that's our main airflow. And then if you look back here, It's our sink first aid. You guys all know I'm a pretty big first aid guy, but that thing ain't nothing to write home about. Then under here we got our jacks, buffer, some jack stands, tow hook stuff for the plow for the pickup truck, um, saline tanks, creeper air hoses. This is Joe's stuff over here. And then here's one that I just brought in. This is gonna get refinished. These two are next. The, the one you saw up front here is just a quickie. You need to get it back in service. So the headlight bucket had fallen out. So we just take two part epoxy and glue replacement back in there and put this one back in service. And then, uh, well, we'll get to this one at a later time. We can't repaint them all at once, so one of the two, three at a time will do. But uh, we'll get this one in eventually. Over here, a couple of lockers for the guys, Joe, AJ. And we'll have some different sandpaper, scuff pads, fiberglass. This is uh, the welding helmet I got for the guys. I'm in charge of... Um, also making sure we have all the right safety equipment and making sure whatever we need, we have. So I picked this one up only because I thought it was really cool and uh, it was cheaper than the, the uh, one that didn't have anything on it for some reason. It was on sale, so that's the one I got. It works really good. More fiberglass, dust masks, uh, different glues and stuff and nuts and bolts. We don't use the pinstripes but, anymore, but they're here different extra couplings um, these are cool these are like st uh, stamps that you can stamp key tags or whatever extra welding wire more nuts and bolts rivets all that good stuff <clears throat> this is a uh, Tony's toolbox so he's um second in line next under me and then this is my area um, that's my locker now, I don't really keep much in mind I just uh this is a long um, suit it's like a you know I use that for when I scrape the frames I don't want to get all filthy dirty so I put that on extra hat in case I, I usually wear this when I'm scraping the frames and what I'll do is I'll, oops, I'll clip my O-light onto it, like you can do. And uh, I'll put my hat on my head. And then I'll be able to see when I'm scraping and cleaning up as I'm going. So as you can see, the O-lights come in, uh, in handy. Um, what else is in here? So that's a welding jacket. And then extra paint suit. That's actually for Tommy. Uh, and I keep some extra mask filters in there. And this is my toolbox. So I have this little light rigged up that I can turn on. Uh, it's plugged in underneath there, but... Um, you know, just a bunch of different stuff here, speakers, uh, all my tools.
tools. This will open up a door, screwdrivers, picks. A lot of, a lot of heavy equipment. This is my spray gun equipment. Uh, it's a SADA NR5000. And this is your Iwata um, LS400 Supernova. Very expensive. Um, these are my badass safety glasses. These are for the paint mask I'll show you. And this is just a bunch of extra truck keys I keep around. Um, there's a probably about $2,000 worth of spray guns right here. So Moving down here, it's my sockets and all that good stuff. Uh, sanding blocks. Different scrapers. Rivet gun, different stuff like that. Wire wheels. Some hammers, heavier stuff. And then hard hat. It's important to have around here for when you're taking off uh, exhaust. Some of these have big stacks on them. This, these ones don't because they're single axles, but the twin tandem axles will. And we'll have to take them off so we can paint that corner cab. So uh, having a hard hat, face shield, uh, paint mask, little pack. It's good to keep your paint mask in a zip top lock bag because the filters will last a little bit longer. Just extra paint suits. Uh, this is all extra stuff like for uh, for the shop that I keep locked up in my box so it doesn't disappear and walk away on us. Grinders, stuff like that. Um, back here, this is my little seat. So if this out of the way, get to here my paint mask for when I paint the truck so that's the filter and you got to wear this big thing around your waist and uh, this is the mask for it so and that'll help you breathe fresh air while you're painting uh, stuff's pretty dangerous. This is my little tool cart. Try to keep it kind of clean. I have a lot of extra nuts and bolts for when I'm building stuff. This one's a little more organized than some wood blocks and stuff like that that you need to do whatever you got to do. Over here, um, extra parts, extra door handles, extra glass, ones that aren't broke. Just all a bunch of extra stuff parts, windows, all the main stuff that likes to break a lot on these trucks. So, and then over here, this is my desk. Um, so this is like, just like not screws and stuff, organizable screws and all that good stuff. My calendar, um, my cutting edge for when we're doing the decals, then our computer system. My phone for the shop, um, and my ID to get in the building, and also my garage door opener. I'm one of the only people that has one on a computer, so we'll basically have all our jobs lined up and all that good stuff. And here, under here, we have some batteries, jumpers, the welder, some cleaning supply stuff, more jumper cables, more cleaning supply stuff, oil dry. Um, extra rags and then this is where the decals are I'm actually getting a separate cabinet for this stuff so they don't get all dirty but these are all our decals and these, these are the uh, coca-cola ones these are the bigger ones uh, DOT numbers and truck numbers all that good stuff um, so that's about it for the shop here and then walking over Take a good look at everything and keep up here some extra mirrors and shit. Extra mirrors, another extra hood, door panels, some cups. This all needs to get straightened out a little bit better, but we'll get to it. Uh, we're just kind of swamped right now. But um, moving on out here. Got some extra cab. We all stripped apart. 
extra parts. Bad doors, we're gonna cut the metal out of them. That's good for that body line. Sometimes they'll come in rust it, and we need that line to always rust it right in this area. So we'll cut the body line out of the door, and we'll weld it in place where this line is. So works out good. Obviously, this is the paint booth. We have the controls back here. Okay. Got your pressure reader, how the pressure is inside, temperature, heat on and off fan, and uh, this will adjust the pressure inside the booth. You don't really want to touch that um, unless the needle is in one direction. Then that means uh, the filters probably need to be changed. So in here, we have one that's freshly painted. So basically, I'm just going over this now as soon as I get done my break. Um, so basically, this is what they look like when they're finished. Um, base coat, clear coat. The frame gets painted. The wheels get painted. The steps get painted, the whole frame. Rear wheels and everything. I actually painted this one. It's not all the time I get to paint them because Tommy paints uh, a lot of them too. Me and Tommy usually do all the painting. The other two guys just kind of do a lot of the other stuff. Joe does a lot of the heavier body work along with me. And uh, I get busy a lot of times with all the other stuff I'm responsible with. But uh, once in a while I get to shoot one. And uh, I have actually the most experience of painting out of anybody here. So, um, you know, I been painting for about 20 years so uh, I'm only 34 but I've been painting for a very long time but this is what one of my paint jobs look like and uh, it's really not that easy to paint these smaller ones as much as it is the bigger ones because there's nowhere to walk across when you got to paint the roof too and uh, so yeah there's the frame and everything also part of my job is to make sure the trucks are DOT legal before they leave my shop. So it's not my job to enforce here, but when they actually come through my shop, it's my job to make sure everything's properly working. And basically, I gotta do a pre-check on the whole truck, which is why it's important that I have a CDL. Um, like all the, everything's gotta be tight, the mirrors, everything's gotta work. Hey guys. Um, the stickers are all on. All the, all, everything works good. Um, everything opens and closes and latches. There's no illegal welds on the bumpers. The grill's in properly. The lights are all working, everything. Also, a lot of these drivers, um, they like to personalize their trucks and uh, put like stickers on the windows and stuff or whatever. I'm actually missing a gasket. Actually, I gotta put that gasket on and we're missing the R. That's gotta go on, it's very important. But anyway, they like to put the stickers on their windows, so I gotta make sure they don't have anything like that. Along with, that's all the stuff that I took out of this thing. And there's baskets, so they'll come in and these drivers, they just like to make it a little easier on themselves and have different crates or whatever in there. But unfortunately, that's uh, can't have anything floating around here. So I make sure they have their fire extinguishers or triangles, everything they need, spare fuses, and there's no debris and no stickers in the uh, view of the driver. So that's part of my job. Only when they come through my shop though, I'm, it's, that, it's the driver's responsibility daily. But if they come through my shop to get refer refinished, it's uh, part of my duty to make sure that they're leaving the way they're supposed to be leaving. Um, as far as this is an IFTA sticker for the state of New York. Uh, we're in Pennsylvania here, but these go th are tagged out in New York. We do drive these all the way to New York, upstate. Some go all the way as far as Atlanta for picking up the sugar. Um, so yeah, this is basically what one looks like. All finished. A uh, little, little hack here. I just take some steel wool on all this stuff and clean it up. 
on all the windows. Make sure there's no overspray on the back chrome. And then, uh, if you guys don't know, the best paper towel for windows is newspaper. Newspaper works really good for cleaning windows. It doesn't leave any streaks. That's an old, old school detailer's trick. So, yeah, this is the paint booth and this is what one looks like. I'm actually getting ready to put this back in service. Uh, maybe one day I'll take you guys on a tour of the other fleet shop where they have a lot more cooler toys like air, big jacks that are individual and they lift the whole truck up and different, all a bunch of cool stuff. So maybe one day. I'll need permission to get in there. That 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 place a little bit more uh, hazardous, and this is this is my area down here, so I'm kind of in charge of it. So it's not really a big deal for me to kind of show you guys a little sneak peek. But uh, up there, I'll, I'll actually need permission because it's all a little bit more a little a little bit crazy up there. Let's put it that way. So yeah, uh, another thing about these stickers is they actually got to be perfectly 15. Uh, uh, I forget if it's 15 feet from the bottom of the ground. They want them at eye level. They want all the stickers to be straight eye level instead of following the body lines, which makes sense to me. So, yep. So after it leaves here, it'll go up to the other fleet shop. And they will PM it, which means basically go over what I went over, make sure all the DOT stickers are right, and the engine and oil and all that stuff is where it's supposed to be at. Got another tape machine. This is what we put the bumpers on a lot of times, other horses and stuff. These are trash cans. One's for general waste. The other one's for like the empty cans. No spray cans. They got to go in here. And then we'll take them up and uh, puncture a hole in them and then crush them uh, and then you got your thinner this is a gun cleaner uh, works really good unless the air is turned on in the booth then none of this stuff works but um, yeah you can see all the ground cables and stuff and got to keep it all nice and safe so this is another we used to keep all the chemicals like paint and stuff that we we're using for the day or whatever truck we we're painting out here but uh we weren't allowed to do that anymore, so I had to get us another cabinet. I tried to keep it a little bit cleaner and put that, so we got a lot of the stuff we use here. These are the uh, mixing cups we use. Just disposable, quickie ones. And um, plastic bag. So we try to keep it nice and neat. This is, uh, I know these aren't Ferraris, or. Lamborghinis or anything like that that we're painting here, but um, this is one of the biggest brand companies in the world and uh, we are Very proud of our jobs and the way we make these trucks look so um, You know, I know they're not super fancy, but uh, you know, it's a nice truck and it looks good now And uh, it'll work out good and we're all very proud of the way they look when they come out of here, so they don't last long like that, so these things get banged up. I know they're just soda delivery trucks, but uh doesn't matter. I, one of the one things I learned in life is to always treat your job and what you're doing in the highest regards. Like uh, you know, just no matter what you're doing, always always love what you're doing and always appreciate your work, no matter what it is. If you're building furniture to to painting tractors to stacking library books or flipping burgers at mcdonald's just take pride in it and uh that's all you really need to do to be successful and uh so that's it guys hope you enjoy the video a little sneak peek at the shop and what i do for a living and uh actually got to get back to work so i'll catch you guys in the next one peace